Terror Reborn. Today we're taking a look at High Toys Exquisite Mini Alien Resurrection Lead Alien Warrior. Welcome back. Alien Resurrection, not the best of the alien movies, but I kind of have a soft spot for it. It's cheesy, but it's fun. It's entertaining. And uh, I'm excited to add this alien to my collection. So interestingly, it's called the Lead Alien Warrior. I don't really remember there being a specific alien that kind of stalks them through the film, like uh, the great alien in AVP. So uh, I'm not sure why they're specifying this as the lead alien warrior. I don't know if there were any other variations, if the underwater ones were any different or anything like that. There was, of course, the newborn, but uh, this kind of implies that there's going to be other aliens from this line aside from the newborn. So uh, I, I haven't seen any solicitations for that, so I'm not sure if that's the case, but interesting. Anyway, we have the Alien Resurrection logo on the side. On the back, we have our legalese and some pictures of the figure. So let's get him into the packaging and see how he looks. So we have the alien out of the packaging and I do have him on his stand because uh, the leg design does make having him stand without it a little bit difficult. Measuring him up, we can stand, see he stands just over five inches tall or about 13 centimeters. So he's really tall for a xenomorph. And of course, the height does depend on his pose. I've got him standing what I would consider more or less uh, straight. For this design of alien for accessories he doesn't bring much we do get the before mentioned stand with the peg hole on it these little cuts in the side here if you take any of these two little brackets you can attach them anywhere along the side to form a diorama with other high toys bases the only other things he comes with are an alternate set of hands these are more uh, straight fingers compared to the ones you get on the figure itself, which are slightly curved, not a huge difference between them. So as I mentioned before, I always had a soft spot for Alien Resurrection, and part of that is because of the alien design. This is a cool looking design for the alien, and in figure form, it's just incredible. The head sculpt going back to the uh, kind of dog alien, or the big chap with the smooth dome, unlike the aliens and uh, Alien vs. Predator Requiem one, the paintwork on it is just amazing. I really like this color they've used. It reminds me of um, like that rainbow effect you get in gas and stuff like that. Really interesting color. Great choice by it. You can see all the different hues. Kind of a greenish brown, more of a copper color. Just dry brushed on, black really really well done interesting that the design is less um sexual compared to some of the other aliens they kind of just straightened it out i don't know if that was a marketing thing or what but uh really cool teeth doesn't look very happy the jaw is a little crooked we get that a lot on these alien figures i'm not sure why if it's just not aligned properly or what but doesn't, the jaw is articulated and does open quite a bit. Of course, you have the inner mouth. Really easy to get out on this one. Dry brushing and everything on it. It does feature semi-prominently in the film. Uh, Ripley does rip one of these out of an alien's mouth to give it to one of the characters as a memento. You can see the silver paint on the inner mouth there. Moving down, we've got the kind of Skeletal design again. Great uh, Giger design work, although Giger didn't actually work on this film, I don't think. But it's certainly inspired by the work he did do. See the shoulder pads. He's got four fingers on his hand. The more curved attack claws. And then we have the uh, the more uh, animal-like legs. I'm not sure why, since the aliens were born from humans, you would think that would have the more human design. Maybe it was a genetic anomaly from the cloning process, but pretty interesting. 
And on the bottom, he does have a peg hole on his right foot, but not his left foot. And like I said, the stand is kind of necessary for this guy, uh, just because of the way these knees are. There's a lot of articulation points there, so it does uh, have a little bit of trouble standing. So we go down, he's got a really long tail, not a super crazy fin on it, like some of the other aliens or the spike, but uh, it definitely does get put to good use in the film. And as we go up, we can see he's got the four pipes there. He does not have the fifth one that some of the aliens have. So it doesn't really get in the way of uh, articulation or anything like that. But yeah, really cool alien design and the paintwork. I just love that color on the dome there. It reminds me of um, the Super Nintendo Alien vs. Predator game. Some of them would have like a red dome, while the rest of the alien would be green. It kind of reminds me of that. Very, very cool work. Uh, that's what's great about high toys. The paintwork is almost always just exquisite. And this is no exception. So turning to articulation, as mentioned, the head does have really good up and down movement because of that lack of uh, hindrance there. So you get a little bit of side to side, not a whole lot. And uh, it does rotate, but not a whole lot because of the neck design hitting the shoulder pads in that. As mentioned, the jaw is articulated and the inner jaw comes out. Being careful with these arms here because they are thin and could be a little bit fragile. You can lift them a bit that high. They do rotate all the way around and they get nice and close to the body too. The elbow, we're going to be careful with it. It's a single bend. The hands are a, on a ball joint. As far as the abdomen goes, not a whole lot of movement here at all. Just a slight amount. It's really more for uh, a little bit of turning side to side. As for the legs, they will rotate all the way around. And they do kind of shift up and down to get into uh, different positions. The knees are on a double joint. There is rotation down at this other little knee. And it does go back and forth a good amount. There is swivel at the foot, but there is no up and down. So yeah, you should be able to get them into lots of good poses with the the legs being so articulated, you can get them into crawling and crouching poses and stuff like that. Not a lot of movement in the chest. I'm not sure why, actually. Because um, there really isn't a whole lot of, like, there's no spikes or anything at the back here to really hinder it. But uh, you can still get the turning and everything. So that's good. Overall, this is one heck of a figure. Hayatoys always does a really good job on... Uh, the aliens and this is one of their standout examples it's not my favorite of the alien uh, sculpts in that i like the big chap and the dog alien the best but uh, this is such a well-painted figure and it's so so interesting i know it's not everybody's favorite movie but it's still a great looking xenomorph and if you're skipping it because you don't like the movie you're missing out on a great figure the predator figures are always great too but uh High Toys seems to put a little bit of extra love and care into the Xenomorphs. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up button. That would really help me out. I have reviewed many Alien and Predator figures, and I have many more to come, so be sure to subscribe if you want to see those. But for right now, I'd like to thank you for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye.